This podcast will be a quick review of what it means for a number to be in scientific notation and also how to change a number into scientific notation. So remember, scientific notation is just a different way for us to write a number. When you see a number written in this form, it's still a number. It's just written a little differently. That's what the word notation means. It just it provides us another way to write something. Scientific, because it's used in a lot of the sciences. If we want to talk about the distance between this, our sun and the next closest star, it's going to be a very large number if we're talking about miles. You know, a typical, lar a better unit would be you know, light years, but that's still quite a large number. If we were talking about miles, it would be a very, very, very large number. And if we wanted to write that number out, we don't want to have to write the different uh, decimal places and, and uh, place values that would be required. So we want to be able to write a number that's small or large and write it in terms of the scientific notation. So what is scientific notation? Again, it's a number written in this form where A is a number between 1. It can be 1, but it has to be less than 10. Notice it can be equal to 1, this little equal to sign under the less than sign, and it has to be less than, strictly less than, not less than or equal to, it cannot equal 10. In other words, some examples of numbers we could have. We could have 2.3. We could have 5.75. We could have 8.2. We could have, let's say, 9. All right. Notice all these numbers have one single numeral in the ones place, and that's it. Some numbers we cannot have. You cannot have 11. You cannot have 13 or 47. These numbers are no good. You cannot include them, or you cannot have them in the place of A, because they have two different value. You're using the tens place and the ones place. The first digit in your number here for A should be in the ones place and that's it. These numbers should not be used in scientific notation. We would have to write these numbers slightly different. The exponent, N, can be positive or it can be negative. If it's positive, we're talking about large numbers. And what I mean by large numbers is they're going to be greater typically they're going to be greater than 1. So large numbers. And if you're talking about a negative exponent, these are going to be small numbers. It's not always necessarily going to be large or small. Again, those are adjectives that can be relative to what you're talking about. But if you're talking about the mass of a proton, you're going to use a negative exponent because that's going to be a very 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 small number. And if you're talking about the weight of planet Earth, that's going to be a very large number, so the exponent is going to be a positive exponent. And the reason why is because this exponent is just telling us how many times we're multiplying by 10. Remember, 10, when you multiply something by 10, it moves the decimal point. So if you multiply by 10, you're going to move the decimal point 1 to the right. If you multiply by 10 squared, you'll move it 2 to the right. The exponent is going to tell us how many times you're going to move the decimal point. If you need a review on the powers of 10 and what happens with that, I can uh, link you right here to uh, another podcast where I discuss the powers of 10. Let's look at some examples of numbers in scientific notation. Here are two examples of numbers that are written in scientific notation. I can tell you that they are correctly written in scientific notation, because if you look at this number, our number that's being multiplied by a power of, of 10, that's this side's always easy to figure out is okay. You just have 10 with an exponent, so that's okay. But here, this number needs to be between 1 and 10. It cannot be 10, right? It has to have just one numeral in the ones place, which we have here, just in the ones place, and then point and then whatever's left over. So this number is between 1 and 10. This number is between 1 and 10. We're good. So how would you change 7.65 times 10 to the 7th? What is this number really? Maybe we're talking about miles. Maybe we're talking about feet. Whatever unit or whatever you know, relative to whatever problem we're talking about, this is the number we're discussing, and we want to see what it is equivalent to if we wrote it out in standard notation as opposed to scientific notation. So we're multiplying by 10. 
Well, let's see real quick. I'm going to just do this really quick. If you had 7.65 and you multiplied it by just 110, that's going to move the decimal point 1 to the right. So this would be 76.5. If you took 7.65 and you multiplied it by 10 squared, that's going to move the decimal point 2 to the right. So this would be 765. So you can see every time you multiply by a power of 10, you're moving the decimal point to the right. And we're going to do that seven times. So what I like to do is to take the number 7, 6, 5, and I'm going to move it seven times, and then I'll go back and put the zeros in. So let's do that. Let's move it seven times. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is where the decimal point is going to end. And I'll go back and put my zeros in between those little loops. And I see when I multiply by a power of 10 to the 7th, I have to add on 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Five zeros. I'm going to go back and just rewrite this number. So we're going to have 7, 6, 5, and then 5 zeros. And then you can go back and then put in your commas. Our number is 76, it looks like million, 76,500,000. This number, 7.65 times 10 to the 7th, can be changed in the scientific notation by moving the decimal point to the right seven times, and we get this number. And you might be saying, how? why are we moving it to the right? Why not the left? Well, a couple reasons. Again, you can go back and think about what happens when you multiply by a positive power of 10. You could also think about positive exponents. We're dealing with larger numbers. So when you're talking about positive exponents, we're talking about the distance from Earth to the sun or the sun to another star. And I always go back to those examples because those are large numbers. When you deal with negative exponents, you know that this is going to turn into a very small number. 5.2 times 10 to the negative 4 is going to be a very small number. And it's similar to if we were changing it into a positive, excuse me, a large number, but instead of moving the decimal point to the right, we're going to be moving it to the left. So let's take our number, 5, 2, this is where our decimal point is, and similar to what I did over here where I moved the decimal point to the right 7 times, I'm going to move it to the left 4 times. So I'm going to have 1, 2, 3, 4. This is where my decimal point is going to end up. Go back and put in my zeros. So I'm going to have 0 0.00052. That is the number written in scientific notation. The negative exponent, every time you multiply by a power of 10 raised to a negative exponent, you're actually dividing out a power of 10. So when you divide out one power of 10, you move the decimal point to the left. When you divide out by another power, you move it to the left, and you're going to do this four times. A quick rule here, and I don't suggest memorizing these, these little hints unless you understand why the hint works. If you strictly memorize something and you don't know why it works, then don't memorize it. It's not worth memorizing because you're going to... You know, it, it's not. It's going to do a disservice for you later on. It's better to understand why something's happening. One memorization technique here, if you can figure out why this is, when you raise something to a negative exponent, number raised in scientific notation, this negative exponent tells us how many zeros there are. So if I saw this number, 5.2 times 10 to the negative 4, I know I'm going to have four zeros. You may say, well, wait a second, I only, three, I only see three zeros here that were added on. Well, if you memorize this to be four zeros, so let's do that. Let's write out one, two, three, four, and then our number, five, two. One way to do it, it tells you how many zeros to write, and then you put the decimal point between the first two zeros. And notice these two things are equal, right? You can either physically move it four to the left, or you can just write out four zeros in front of this number and put the decimal point between the first two zeros. That way you have a leading zero. Depending on what class you're in, you may be required to have this leading zero, which then this little rule might be helpful. This is not a rule that you can use using positive numbers, okay? positive exponents. 
This will work if the number is correctly written in scientific notation with negative exponents. And the reason why is because you know exactly what's going to happen. Since you know if it's correctly written in scientific notation, you only have the leading digit in the ones place. It doesn't have to travel past more than one you know, place value. Here, depending on you know, what numbers are after the 7, the, the 6, 5, maybe we have a 4, 7, 2, 1, it doesn't tell you how many zeros because you know, these numbers have to be included as well. However, we know there should be no number in front of this 5, so we will have zeros to the left of the 5. If that doesn't make sense, don't worry about it. The best thing to know is that the power on the 10 tells you how many decimal places to move. Positive exponent, you move to the right. Negative exponent, you move to the left. The last example I'm going to cover is what happens when you are multiplying two numbers in scientific notation. Let's say we had 3 times 10 to the 8th times 5 times 10 to the 12th. Both of these numbers are very large numbers. Notice that all of these terms, all these things are being separated by multiplication. So what we can do is kind of take down, we can take down that multiplication. So this is 3 times 10 to the 8th times 5 times 10 to the 12th. That's really what's going on there. We're multiplying all those things. Since multiplication is commutative, I'm going to write it like this. 3 times 5 times 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 12th. Again, the reason why I can go from this step to this step is because multiplication is commutative. I can move things around. They can commute from one side to the other without changing the value of that expression. So now let's multiply. 3 times 5, we get 15 times, well... 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 12th. What is the exponent rule when you multiply with like bases? This is going to be 15. I'm going to write the little x there that we see in scientific notation. You know that there's going to be how many 10s being multiplied. If you're having 8 being multiplied here and 12 being multiplied here, you're going to have a total of 20. All right? 8 plus 12 is 20. So you may be saying, okay, there's our answer, 15 times 10 to the 20th. And we got that just by moving the, multiplying the 5 and the 3 to get 15 and then saying 10 to the 8th times 10 to the 12th is 10 to the 20th. That's great. The problem. This is not a number correctly written in scientific notation. Yes, we have 10 raised to a power. 15 is not between 1 and 10. So how can we write 15 as a number between 1 and 10? Well, change 15 into scientific notation. We know that in order to change 15 into scientific notation, the decimal point is going to have to go between 1 and 5. So to change 15 into scientific notation, we would write that as 1.5. And then how many places is the decimal point moving? It's moving just once, so this is times 10. All right, 10 to the first power, if you want to write it as 10 to the first power. So all I did there was change 15 into scientific notation and changed it into 1.5 times 10. Don't forget that this right here, this times 10 to the 20th, is still there. Right? That's still there. So now how many 20 or excuse me, how many tens are being multiplied? We have 110 here, we have 20 here. Our number has now changed to be 1.5 times 10 to the 21. This is our answer. All right. When you're multiplying numbers in scientific notation, yes, you can multiply the two numbers in front, the A's, if you will, the 3 times 5 to get 15. And you can combine the 10's to have one exponent. You just need to remember that you're going to have to change this A. Sometimes they're going to multiply, and they're not going to be a number between 1 and 10. So you can change that number into scientific notation and then combine the powers of 10.